Too many pipers let their pipes get too filled with yuck and nasty and risk getting themselves and others sick. Don't let that be you. Hello, my name is Matt Willis, and in this web series, I give tips and strategies on how to make you a stronger and more confident piper. Cleaning out your pipes. That is what today's episode is all about. So, I want to start with some of the products we're going to be using that many of you should have on hand. Rubbing alcohol, available from any place you can get first aid supplies, go in your grocery store, or, uh, Walgreens, CVS. Hydrogen peroxide, another very handy thing to have. I also like to have some McLens. This is a product available from several bagpipe resellers. I'm not entirely certain what's in here, but it seems to do a good job of keeping things clean, especially on the field and in the moment. And it's also useful to have just some disinfecting wipes, just whatever kind of standard cleansing wipes you might have. Some Q-tips ready. Paper towels, and perhaps even a nice soft microfiber cloth, nice and clean, nice and soft. The first parts I want to discuss are the sections where we put our mouth, the blowpipe, the end of your practice chanters, and things like that. For your blowpipe, I would recommend on perhaps a weekly basis, at least once a month, I would go ahead and I like to take it off. Just unscrew it right from the end of the blowpipe so you can get this mouthpiece off and clean. And I don't know if you can see on there, it's it's relatively clean. It's a little damp. I've been playing the pipes recently, but not within the last uh, 12 hours, and yet there's still some moisture on here. So that's a little, little gross. So we're going to take glass and some hydrogen peroxide. And I'm gonna just fill this glass part way with some hydrogen peroxide. This stuff's like 88 cents to a dollar. So don't skimp, use plenty. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put my blowpipe right in there. I'm also going to put the end of my practice channel in here. Now this has a, a wooden top on this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and if I can, there we go, unscrew the wooden section from the mouthpiece and I'm going to put this just whole mouthpiece right in there with it. Now, and you can see there's a couple of bubbles. You can hear a little bit of foaming, but I do this on a fairly regular basis. So this is fairly clean. I have another practice channer that the tip on this is actually, it's, it's an older tip that I like. It's nice and comfortable. It's like a hardened rubber. This is one that I'm going to go ahead and remove to clean, but I don't know how this particular material is going to react in hydrogen peroxide, so I just use clean soap and water and cold because if this really is rubber, which it feels like, warm can uh, discolor it, make it all brownish color rather than the black you see right now. So this is a piece I would just wash with some soap and water. So I'm just going to go ahead and let these stay in there. And I'm going to probably let them stay in for at least a few hours, if not overnight. I typically do this at the end of a day. Now, if you have an entire plastic top like this, like a standard plastic practice channer, you could clean just the mouthpiece in the hydrogen peroxide like I'm doing here, or you can go ahead and wash this whole thing in just clean soap and water, just like you're washing some dishes. Just get it nice and clean and then let it air dry. This happens to be one of the newer Hardy twist trap mouth pieces, and it actually comes off and has two parts. If you have one of these design, I'm, I'm only aware of one manufacturer doing this. There might be some other designs on the market that have multiple part, you know, mouthpieces or tops for the practice channer. Take apart, make sure it's all clean and let it air dry. You let this be completely dry before you put it back together. All right, continuing on with the blowpipe. Now, I don't use a valve on my blowpipe. I use a noose valve. If you have some sort of internal valve, you have to look at how it's constructed. For me, I've been using noose valves for years. They live inside the, the stock itself. Nice little tool that can take it out. Again, on about a weekly basis, I like to take it not just out, but apart. I unscrew it, and I actually put all of the parts right in the hydrogen peroxide. The manufacturer doesn't say anything about this, but I've been doing this for years and years, and I don't have any problems with the hydrogen peroxide 
It cleans it all out. It can get rid of a lot of junk and other buildup that's on there. And it's again, gonna help you keep from breathing in as much nasty that might be building up in your pipes. If you have a valve at the end of your blowpipe, this is another great place to use a Q-tip. You might be able to gently pull up the valve and use that Q-tip. This might be a great place for some McLens. If it's a wooden blowpipe in particular, this doesn't seem to hurt the wood in any real way. And spritz the, get it nice and kind of saturated a little bit and get all around the valve very gently. You might want to lift the flapper with one finger, get underneath, try to get all as clean as you possibly can, get rid of any goo or other stuff you might see and clean the valve off gently as well. If you get a little brown off, that well could be just from the wood of the blowpipe. If you have a plastic, this happens to be a natural plastic blowpipe section. If I were getting brown off a plastic section, that would tell you it's pretty nasty. For the rest of the blowpipe, any sort of brushes, I typically use nice soft brushes. They do make some more bristle style brushes. You use what works for you. I don't want to try to scrape or damage it. To clean the rest of the blowpipe, I'll probably put this in some soapy water or you can use McLean's or something, but you want to get it in there and you want to get it in the blowpipe. You want to kind of run it through. If you have a valve, you can let it push the valve out, but be very careful. Hold that valve in place when you pull it kind of back through. We don't want to damage the valve, but we want to try to get the inside of this clean. And I'm going to go ahead and just take a bit of a paper towel here and again, some McLean's. And I'm going to give it just a quick once over on the outside where the mouthpiece attaches. Get that all nice and clean. So at the end of a playing session, practice, what have you, I like to use these kind of wipes. I'll often have one in my case or a small packet, travel packet of these. And I think it's a great idea to go around, I'll grab my other blowpipe right here, and just wipe it off. You don't want a bunch of dried spittle and nasty on here. I'm cleaning the plastic parts with this, not the wood. And that will go an enormous way to keeping the nasties down. Fold it up a little bit and get it right in the tip. And if you want, you can rinse this off when you get home. I'm not trying to say you should put this straight in your mouth. Do this when you're done playing. But you can wipe off the end of your practice channer and what you need to wipe off, again, if it's plastic. These are great, but you don't want a bunch of dried spittle. You can imagine what that dried spit is harboring. And I see it on lots and lots of people's blowpipes when they're playing. I'll walk up to tune their drones and I'll see six months or four years worth of dried spit at the end of their blowpipe. Don't let that be you. That's nasty and it can get you or other people sick. Now let's move on to the stock itself. If you have a plastic stock, this one's plastic. Again, a uh, disinfectant wipe can be a great thing to stick and just clean out all of that valve. If it's plastic, you don't have anything to worry about. Just go ahead and wipe the outside of it all a little bit. But most people are going to have wooden. This, has, this is a blackwood set of pipes, but it has a plastic blowpipe stock, which I find quite handy. If you have a wooden one, the best thing you really can do is to keep it dry. At the end of a playing session, you're gonna to wanna to take a brush and dry it out as best you can. If it's wood, I'd probably take a paper towel and again, maybe a little McLean's. A couple spritzes right there and get it right inside the stock. And I'm just putting a light spritz and I'm not even spritzing it directly on the wood. I'm spritzing it on a cloth that I'm then using to wipe down. The bag itself, this is the single biggest hazard. So I'm going to start with a synthetic bag. We'll talk about hide bags next. When you're done practicing every time, unzipping the bag, and I got a nice firm grip here. I'm supporting it very thoroughly and letting the bag air dry. If possible, when I'm at home, I let it air dry outside of the case. The drier the inside of the bag, the less likely it is to harbor nasties. But I still like to clean the inside of the bag from time to time. Well, I have not seen uh, a manufacturer give uh, explicit instructions on how to do this. What I like to do is remove any sort of 
valves or other system you might have inside. I currently have the MCS3 moisture control system. Now, to clean the inside of the bag, this is actually just a, it's an old spritz bottle. It was an old McLean's bottle that I've since cleaned out and it's filled with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I do not want to completely saturate the inside of the bag, but I do want to do my best to get it clean. So I do this, I'd like to say once a month, it's probably more like every six weeks to two months, but if you've never done it, then now's the time. Again, this is a synthetic bag. I happen to have a full synthetic here, but the same thing would work for a hybrid style bag, not an actual leather bag. Real leather bags we'll get to next. And I just like to spritz the rubbing alcohol into the bag. I am not trying to saturate any surface, but I am trying to make sure it gets on everything. So now I can't really show it, but I'm gonna put right inside the bag, a couple spritzes. I'm getting it up into the neck. If you have any pointy rings or anything you can damage your pipe bag with, I'd get rid of that. I'd get rid of it. At least take it off. Don't throw it away. <laughs> and I'm spritzing. I got my hand. It's like a puppet now. I got it right up in there, right under the blowpipe, probably one of the nastier areas. I'm just trying to put a little alcohol over the bag on the inside. If you have plastic stocks, you can go ahead and just spritz right inside the stock. I know my blowpipe is plastic, so I'm gonna spritz right in there all the way through to get into the bag. The rest of my stocks are wood, so I'm not going to do that. And once I've spritzed the inside, I very quickly go back with a clean paper towel, and I'm going to wipe down the bottom of the stocks, which are wood. So the stocks come through the grommets. I am going to wipe those off right now because I don't want the alcohol drying out the wood. It's already got just a little bit on there, so it's cleaned off it to some degree, but I can feel some standing alcohol. Now I'm going right up into the neck. My hands are relatively small. I can do this. If your hands are really big, you might want to take a cloth, a gentle, soft cloth, get it up in there to dry off the wooden parts. And then I'm going to let this sit and air dry. This alcohol should dry in less than five minutes. If in five minutes it's not dry, you've probably put too much of this in here. Again, I'm not trying to saturate the bag. I'm trying to just get a light misting of alcohol on the inside surfaces to help kill anything that may be growing inside of there. If you're a bag manufacturer and you don't like this technique, please let me know, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to put up an additional video with uh, perhaps better techniques on how to clean the bag, but I do find it important with a synthetic bag that we do what we can to keep the life from occurring too readily inside here. If you do have a moisture control system, this can often be overlooked, as could these valves I already took out. Most of them are in some sort of plastic. Again, this is a great time. I'm going to just take one of my disinfectant wipes. Thwack. And I'm just going to just wipe the outside of it. There's one. It seems perhaps overkill, but these are living right inside the bag while you're playing and are exposed to all of the same everything that's in your bag. And I'm trying to minimize me getting sick. I'm gonna take the outside and again of these, for mine, how they're held in, every system is a little bit different. I'll just wipe them down. I'm not wiping the inside. I'm not trying to get the valve assembly in any way. Just wanna make sure I'm doing my due diligence to keep the instrument clean. Tube traps. Lots of people have them. They have them lots of different designs. This is the standard kind of milk bottle one. Comes with uh, the Bannatine style bags. You might have a split stock with just a plastic tube that attaches to your stock. You might have some sort of other contraption at the end of this. In any case, we have to keep these clean as well. For me, bottle comes off and I first deal with the tube. Now, I tend to just take this whole thing to the sink and wash it out. I have a nice kind of scrubby brush like this, but it doesn't matter what kind of brush you have. Nice soapy water and get it in there and get it all clean. If there's black dots of mold and growth in here, you may well want to get a mild bleach water solution to help you clean and completely sterilize this part or just buy a new one. 
I think they're $15 if it's super nasty. Um, but you want to keep this clean. You want to keep this dry. When I'm using one of these, which I use in cooler weather, I think they could be pretty handy. I take it out every time I'm done playing. When I'm done piping, I unzip the bag. Out comes the trap. Off comes the bottle. And then out comes the lovely little bit of rayon or whatever this material is. I just want to see it's nice and clean. Let it dry. I find I let these last about three-ish months if I play regularly with them. After that, they tend to start getting kind of gross even if I'm letting them dry and I'm washing them out. Just a little bit of soapy water again and air drying can go a long way. Spritzing either some, you know, rubbing alcohol or McClens on it can help. But you want it to be completely dry before you put it back. And then just take the milk bottle, some soapy water, get it all clean. No black growth or dots of anything in here. But as the bottle goes on the floor. By the end of the day, if this part that's gathering the condensed moisture from your breath in that bottle, if this starts getting too gross or falling apart, you're gonna to wanna to replace it. You can get, it could be a ShamWow, some sheet of rayon, something in there to help absorb the water. They work even without this, but the fluid inside the bottle tends to kind of swish around and can even leak out. This does a good job of keeping it in one place, but they will get nasty over time. But whatever your tube system is, if it comes with instructions on specifically how to clean it, use those. If it doesn't, use your brain, but keep it clean. Don't let it start growing anything. No valve is 100% efficient, and some of the nasties that are in this are gonna get back into your face and lungs, and we don't want you getting sick. But what if you have a hide bag, a nice old school hide bag? How do you keep these things clean? There is less you can do. There's less you can do than a synthetic bag. If it's been properly seasoned, whether you use uh, the airtight product or whatever product your bag manufacturer either makes or recommends, these typically have some sort of antimicrobial product in them, and they can go a long way to keeping too much undue grossness from growing inside the bag. Outside of that, the things you can really do for a hide bag, especially an old school one like this with no sort of zipper or access to the inside, don't eat before you play. If you do, try to, to rinse your mouth thoroughly, brush your teeth, what you need to do. Try to limit what you're getting into this bag. Don't drink sugary soda and a bunch of other nasties and then immediately go to play your pipes. Try to rinse your mouth out and have it as clean as you can be before you blow into this. I Even if I'm drinking a lot of beer, you know, I don't want to just blow beer water into my bag. I try to, again, rinse my mouth with a little bit of water before I inflate my hide bags. Because again, once it gets in there, there's not a lot of ways it can get out and you don't want it to start growing more than it has to. Your pipe channer. This one can be a little bit tougher to keep clean for several reasons. One of them is if you tune your channer or your pipe major tunes your channer, you're almost certainly gonna have tape on your channer. And this tape actually can harbor quite a bit of nasties on it itself, either from the tape itself, this is kind of the more textured tape. It holds up better in the heat in Texas, I find, than just electrical tape. But regardless of the type of tape you have on here, it leaves residue, sticky, nasty goo, when you take the tape off or try to adjust it. And you're putting your grubby hands all over this stuff. This is gonna be harboring a lot of stuff too. And yet you don't wanna to have to be cleaning this every time. I find, again, some sort of nice wet wipe, and I just kind of gently, and again, not every time I play, but on a weekly-ish basis, I like to try to do my best to just kind of wipe it down. But I know this isn't gonna be perfect. After I'm done playing, um, if at all possible, I like to wash my hands before going and doing other things. I'm not an overly big germaphobe. I just wanna do my best to not get myself or the others around me sick. All right, if it is time to clean off the sticky from your pipes though, this is a type of cleaning as well, even if it's not necessarily uh, antibacterial and microbial. But if you wanna get this off, I find just good old fashioned bore oil. I'm not gonna show the brand name here, but this happens to be clear. If it's clear oil, I wouldn't put this on your wood, but it does a great job of taking the sticky off of the channer. So I got a nice little paper towel here, put a little bit of this mineral oil on it, and I find it works more effectively than Goo Gone on our Polypenco. Now, if you have a Blackwood channer, I would prefer to use a product like uh, sweet almond oil or some sort of natural oil 
I don't go around oiling my chan inside of my channer, and we'll have a whole episode on oiling. But if I can limit the introduction of mineral oil, that's good. Now you can see on this one, it's all nice and clean there. There's no sticky residue whatsoever. And when I'm done and the whole thing's clean, I'll take a fresh paper towel, throw the oily one away, put a spritz or two of either isopropyl alcohol or um, McClens on a paper towel and wipe it down to get rid of any oily residue and then it's good and ready for fresh tape. So what's a good schedule to keep while keeping everything clean? Well, the first thing comes on a daily or practice basis, if you can't practice every day. And that is making sure that you dry and clean any external spittle off of your blowpipe and that you dry out the blowpipe, have some brushes ready, dry out your blowpipe stock, remove your chanter, have some sort of chanter cap, remove your chanter from the bag, and then unzip the bag if you can unzip the bag. If that's an option, that's a perfect time to do it when you're done and let everything air dry. That's gonna go a huge way to limiting the growth of any sort of microbes that would do you harm. On a weekly basis, I would thoroughly clean with either soap and water or peroxide or some sort of something, your mouthpiece, the things you put in your face, and in my case, even my moose valve. If you don't have a moose valve and you have a valve at the end, I would still think on a weekly basis you wanna get in there and clean that out with a Q-tip and some other products. And it's gonna go a long way to keeping this valve from sticking, which can make it hard to blow steadily if your valve is sticking against the end of the mouthpiece or blowpipe because it's gross and nasty. And then on a monthly to every other month basis, I would do some sort of cleaning of the inside of the bag if you have a synthetic bag. If you have a hide bag, there is simply less you can do. The seasoning inside a hide bag goes a long way to keeping the bag from growing any sort of nasties. Well, there you go. I know none of this was rocket science, but maybe it'll just make you a little bit more mindful about what you can do to make sure that your instrument is clean and ready to play, doesn't smell, and isn't gonna get you or anybody else sick. If you like this video, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel or just give me a like. If you really like it, you can head over to my Patreon and give me a small monthly donation. It would go a huge way to making videos like this in the future. So again, thanks for watching. My name is Matt Willis and until next time, cheers everybody. Yeah.